I want to try to, as uh, Elsa just mentioned, we've got a special opportunity this evening that we want to share with you. Uh, I mentioned this afternoon about the Association for International Agriculture and Rural Development. <clears throat> we had our annual meetings in Washington, D.C. earlier this month. And one of the things that the association does is honor uh, extraordinary service and accomplishment uh, in three different ways, actually. So we recognize a, a young person, uh, a person who is a member of the association, someone like myself that would be a member, and then also people who are not members of the association. But I want to give you a little information about uh, what we're going to do. I'm going to kind of set this up so that I, uh, hopefully it'll be uh, a logical sequence to you and you'll understand why we've uh, chosen this time to uh, uh, honor a colleague. First of all, the, the mission of the association is to improve the quality of life of people by improving and developing global capacities that respond to challenges and opportunities and to help eliminate poverty. <clears throat> That's very in line with the Borlaug Institute, of course. And the, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to uh, honor uh, Dr. Henry Hank Fitzhugh. He's sitting right over here. We're going to call Hank up here in a few minutes. But he's going to receive the Special Service Award. And let me give you the criteria for, for that uh, award. First of all, it's a career-long commitment to the goals of the association through active support for international agriculture and rural development initiatives over a professional career of at least 25 years. The second point is significant contributions to international agriculture and rural development through research, teaching, practice, service, or leadership. And he has to, uh, the individual has to have also received a, an award for an, from another organization. Here's another important point. That's not me, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> he has to be at least 45 years of age. Hank, are you at least 45 years of age? Okay, all right. I thought you were. And then again, a member not of the uh, not a member of the association. So you may want to ask why in the world did uh, we create a, an award or nominate rather Dr. Fitzhugh? And so let me tell you about how this dawns on me every day when I walk into the institute. First of all, I, there's a large number of you that n have never had an opportunity to come to Texas A&M and to visit the Borlaug Institute for International Agriculture. And so Dr. Morano and I want to give you a, a, a hearty welcome uh, when you do that someday. But when I walk through the doors of our institute every morning, some of the things that I see are, first of all, a statue of Dr. Borlaug. And then these the posters that you've seen in the uh, hallway where we're having our meetings, those are arrayed throughout our office area. And then I walk down the hallway to my office. And our hallways are covered by photographs that were taken by Howard Buffett. And they display the urgent needs of people all over the world uh, that are beaten down by the lifestyle that they have to endure. Uh, you can look into their eyes and see the desperation, that sort of thing that uh, is so uh, evident and a part of their life on a daily basis. And then I get into my office and I drink my first cup of coffee. And then I go down to our, our kitchen area and there's a poster up there and it says, life is short, do stuff that matters. Life is short, do stuff that matters. And so I think that is something that, as I reflect on those words, uh, that's why Dr. Fitzhugh comes to mind. And so we're recognizing career-long achievement. Another thing that I've realized that's important, given my age and that sort of thing, is never pass up the opportunity to say thank you. And uh, giving people awards and recognizing their efforts, I think, is a great way to say thank you. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Fitzhugh. First of all, he's got a bachelor's degree, a master of science, and a PhD from Texas A&M University. He's been a faculty member. He's worked in the private sector. He managed the African and Middle East uh, research portfolio for the Winrock Foundation. He's been deputy director and director general of the International Livestock Center for Africa. And then he was the founding director of ELRI, the International Livestock Research Institute. He's also been chief of party for USAID uh, funded Ethiopia sanitary and phytosanitary standards and livestock meat marketing program that Texas A&M University uh, had the privilege of working with. And so Dr. Fitzhugh provided a, a tremendous amount of leadership and uh, we're very, very pleased about how he represented not only the United States in that effort uh, in the U.S. Agency for International Development, but also Texas A&M University. And today he serves as a senior fellow with the Borlaug Institute for International Agriculture. Throughout his career, Hank has worked in over 45 different countries, 
and he's published over 150 uh, journal or articles and other uh, items for, uh, for to be read. Hank has demonstrated the ability to forge collegial productive relationships with national leaders, educators, and researchers in developing countries. And all of us that have worked in developing countries know what a complex mix that is. And one of the things that Dr. Borlaug was always trying to tell me is, Mike, you need to be an expert in something, and you need to have political skills and know how to work with the leadership in the countries because you can be the smartest guy in the world, but if you can't convince the, the political powers to be, they can block your progress. And he often talked about that. And so I think this is a great uh, attribute that Dr. Uh, Fitzhugh has. I've always found him to be a good listener, a warm, approachable personality, and he always provides valuable insight and sage advice. So please join me in recognizing Dr. Hank Fitzhugh, who has spent his career truly doing things that matter. Okay? <clears throat> So here to give Hank his, his award is uh, our Dean and Vice Chancellor for Agriculture and Life Sciences, Dr. Mark Hussey. Okay. Nelson, okay. you get right in here oh, close oh, by. Oh, we'll, okay. we got to get you out and behind That's the right, podium here go. so everybody can make sure you follow. Here you go, Maggie. Hank, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. On behalf of the association. Thank you, Mike. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Now wait, he's got something to say. Oh, you got something to say? Well, say it. Before dessert. Come out with it. Oh, listen, this cup is for you. Okay, this cup That's is right. for you. <laughs> and it says, life is short. Do stuff that matters. So congratulations. Thank you. First, let, let me thank the association for this award. And I appreciate the recognition, but I thank all of us that have had the opportunity to work in international agriculture research and development know that, in fact, it's a real privilege that comes to us. And through, I've been very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to do that. I appreciate Texas A&M for the education and then for giving me that opportunity. And I appreciate the Borlaug Institute, which is following the example and the leadership of Dr. Borlaug, who's I consider a mentor, a friend, and a mentor. And let me thank the Borlaug Institute for the good work that they continue to do, and I am privileged to be a senior fellow in the Borlaug Institute. So thank you all, and thanks to the association for this award. Very good. Well, we will continue with the program. Um, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for this evening is Dr. Victor Villalobos, who is currently serving as the 10th Director General of IICA, which is the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture. Um, many, many accolades, many, many um, things to tell you about Dr. Villalobos, but we, we want to hear from Dr. Villalobos rather than hearing from me. And one of the things Dr. Borlaug used to always say is, stop talking and start doing. So I, I try to remind myself of, of not talking too much. Uh, well, he was appointed twice, Dr. Villalobos, by the Mexican president as Undersecretary of Natural Resources and as Undersecretary of Agriculture, Livestock, and Rural Development in Mexico. He has served as Director of Agriculture um, of the Agriculture Division of CATIE, where he created the Biotechnology Unit and he later served as president of the board of directors of CATIE. He is actually a scientist, a research scientist, which I know Dr. Nestor will appreciate. Um, he's published over 70 scientific articles and journal and book chapters, served as professor at the Autonomous University of Chapingo, and has also held the position of uh, chief biotechnology officer at FAO, 
where he conducted projects in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. So please help me give a, a warm Texas welcome to Dr. Victor Villalobos. Thank you, thank you very much. Honorable Minister from Honduras, Jacobo Paz. Honorable Ministers, Vice Ministers of Agriculture from El Salvador and Guatemala. Dr. Elsa Murano, Director of Borloff Institute for International Agriculture. Distinguished colleagues and friends, good evening. I would like to begin by thanking Texas A&M and the Burloff Institute for the honor to be here, invited by, to speak to this distinguished and important summit. In reviewing the subject of this summit, I am hopeful we will find common ground on how to move forward in partnership among the United States government, the governments of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, the private sector, universities, research institutes, and NGOs who offer technical cooperation. I have noted that this section focuses on reducing rural poverty through agriculture, investing in capacity building infrastructure and entrepreneurship, US AID supports for Central American transformation and policy and partnership. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, works in all these areas in the Northern Triangle countries that are the focus of this conference. We have been doing so for 74 years and much of it is in line with the development objectives of the United States government. In reaction to the migrant crisis in 2014, I wrote to Secretary of Agriculture Tom Bilsack, urging him to look to investment in improving agriculture in the region, precisely as the summit suggests to reduce rural poverty. It is through economic development that we can begin to turn the tide of the pressures to force people to choose to leave their homes in search of a better way of life and opportunities for themselves and for their children. The circumstances in which this phenomenon has arisen are undoubtedly very serious and complex. However, Many of these minors come from poor rural areas. Therefore, as part of the solution to address this issue, it is urgent to invest in the improvement of the quality of life of rural families with immediately and medium-term actions. Those actions should include direct humanitarian aid, coupled with the creation of opportunities to enable families overcome marginalization and poverty. To help in the definition of this strategy, AICA has presented to the governments of the three countries in Central America and the United States a proposal aimed, firstly, at guaranteeing food security for the population affected, and secondly, at strengthening the productive capabilities of family agriculture. AICA suggested that we could help articulate the participation of agents and agencies acting at the country and the territorial level in the transfer of a simple agriculture techniques and practices which have been already been proved to increase productivity incomes and organization in the poorest rural communities. Coupled with these interventions, we should work 
to strengthening farmer organizations and to improve the business and entrepreneurial capacity of farmers and producers. We suggested a plan that works com uh, complete, immediately, and middle-term actions. The immediate, immediately actions will take place within the first four months of the execution of this strategy. First, identification and characterization of the rural territories with the highest proportion of immigrants. Second, quantification and prioritization of urgent needs in the area of agriculture. Third, identification of relevant NGOs and other organizations working in these territories to coordinate a complementary response. The short-term actions are defined as actions that will take place within the two years of the initial implementation of the strategy and will define the basis for a sustainable and inclusive development of the rural territories. We must build sustainable production programs with emphasis of food production and improve organized access to markets, su supplying inputs adapted to the conditions of the different rural, rural areas, such as improved seeds, fertilizers and pesticides, or small items for farming equipment, organizing and equipping centers where products are collected, produced, and marketed, and developing technical skills and the capacity to organize associative enterprises. Next, we need to develop programs on rural entrepreneurship and collaborative leadership for young, for young people to enable them to integrate into labor markets and markets for goods and services, to develop their potential to innovate and to identify and implement small rural businesses. To do this, we must facilitate revolving loan funds to translate ideas for projects into establish, establishment and a new rural businesses such as handicraft goods, rural tourism, services, etc. Then we must integrate small farmers into local purchase systems, including institutional purchase systems, the World Food Program, local purchasing programs, among others. The middle term actions will take place during the first four years of initiation of the strategy and the primary purpose of them will be to build an enabling environment conduct conducive to improve the social and economic development for the most affected territories. We need to strengthen public policy and programs for inclusion of the rural territories into the national prosperity framework with emphasis on the creation of opportunities for family agriculture. That's include three pillars, public policies, organization of local actors, and articulation of, of sectorial policies and investments, both public and private, in the priority areas. Much of this proposal is reflective of the focus sections of this conference. We are all speaking the same language. Hopefully, with the disbursement of funds for the Alliance for Prosperity, the governments will consider these suggestions and others that will come from this summit in the implementation of the agriculture sector. Expertise and experiences at IICA, working in collabor collaboration with the national governments and with the regional mechanisms of integration, have shown that it is possible to improve income and productivity in the smallholders farming which is in turn contributes to the widespread economic improvements in the region. In El Salvador, in coordination with this government, we worked to increase corn, beans, dairy, 
and production of other sectors to improve the incomes of 19,000 families, many which female heads and households. If we link similar initiatives with the program directed towards young producers and women, we could generate a virtuous cycle in, in the three countries to improve rural incomes at the region and they are, and they are, <clears throat> that they are now sending the children to the United States. With USDA, we have created a regional consortium for agricultural research to improve agricultural productivity. AICAS has identified 18 different products value chains in specific territories to develop viable technical and commercial information for extension services. In Honduras, we are working to improve the value chains in coffee, cocoa, rice, sugar, beans, and cashew. In Guatemala, thanks to the funding from the USDA, we are helping 1,500 small farmers in the Quechi territory receiving information on climate, prices, productive technologies, and other tools in their native language through the Toto Geo platform in coordination with the Rafael Landivar University and University of San Carlos and other partners. A few months ago, I had the privilege to visit Texas A&M University to meet its faculty, administrators, and tour its laboratories. It is truly an impressive place and has so much human and scientific talent to share, not just only with the United States, but with the world as well. I was asked to give a talk on what are the challenges and opportunities facing agriculture in the Americas, so please allow me to highlight a few things. Firstly, today we are facing with the challenge to how to feed humanity in the future. How do we do this sustainably without further damaging natural resources and given the prospect of greater climate change and natural resources constraints, particularly of water? Secondly, how can we make agriculture a good business for all producers? Lastly, how can we help make agriculture more productive, sustainable, and inclusive? There is no doubt that agriculture can respond to all of these challenges, but to do so, we need a drastic transformation in the way agriculture is practiced. We need a new agriculture that is economically profitable, socially inclusive, and environmentally sustainable. Our hemisphere has the greatest potential to become the food basket of the world. We have not only some of the best lands, the most productive systems and abundant natural resources, but also we have a rich tradition in science and innovation with, with talented human resources to make this transformation possible. Our producers have demonstrated time and again that they are able to produce what is needed, how it is needed, and when it is needed. Agriculture is a good business and a powerful engine for development of eradication of inequalities. It is also a powerful engine to maintaining population in their native cities and towns. Giving particular attention to agriculture in the countries of the Northern Triangle will impact not only the competitiveness of the region, but will serve as a magnet to attract investment and to make life more attractive to all of those who today are seeking better living conditions. Agriculture today is a synonym of innovation, as innovation is essential to bring about the big challenge in agriculture. Technologies, both new and traditional, are, are necessary. The pace of the cha change is accelerating and can be felt everywhere. 
Communication technologies, global data and market information are the only tip of the iceberg that will transform the way our food is produced. Allow me to quote Bill Gates who says in 2010, if we are serious about ending extreme hunger and poverty around the world, we must be serious about transforming agriculture. Small family farms make a fundamental contribution to the economies and food security in the region, nearly 60% in Central America. When coffee rust hit the region in 2012, it was estimated that economic damage to the coffee sector impacted as many as 2 million people, and with that, the downstream impact affected millions more. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly hopeful that your work here will lead to increased investment in the agriculture sector in these three countries and eventually through the whole hemisphere. I would like to reiterate IICA's commitment to work with you to achieve these goals and to join forces with the U.S. government and with the governments of the region to find solutions in this problem. We must begin to attacking them at the roots of the problem, that is, improving family and smallholders agriculture development, coupled with the innovative programs to, trade, to train women and youth to enhance their skills and labor, and labor marketability. I would like to offer you our entirely platform of offices and all experiences staff advance in natural agendas to reduce this problem in the short term and to find more sustainable solutions in the future. I am indeed grateful for the invitation to speak on this distinguished audience. We at ICA stand, stand ready to assist our member countries achieve or shared mandate to improve agriculture production and stimulate rural well-being. For your attention, thank you. Thank you very much.